<laughs> Hard to get this beast in one shot, but I promised you guys a deep dive on the LED nonsense I got going on. So get ready. We're going to dive right in. Here we go. All right. Hopefully you guys can hear me over the music, but I kind of wanted to show what it looks like while it's going on and explain it as it's doing it, if that makes any sense. Anyway, so there's a string of lights underneath the cabinet and then also on the side. So it goes along the side, in the front, and then around the other side as well. Excuse the, the room is still a disaster with wires and stuff because I'm still working on this, obviously. Anyway, um, and I got the lights low so you can see the lights better. And then we've got another zone that goes up the side, over the top, and around the back again. So it's like two giant U shapes, as you can see. And then we've got the ring is another channel. So the ring can do, right now I have it set to strobe effect, obviously. And then on the underside, we've got just a single high density that is 144 LEDs per meter. So for three feet, there's 144 LEDs casting a uh, color on my uh that's why i chose i think i explained this earlier that's why i chose black and white artwork is so it takes the color better so it's transformative with all the different led things that are going on and then uh, as i'm sure you saw when i started the video you've got led blinky here let me get out of here and get to uh, a game that supports led blinky So you can see what I'm talking about because it's uh, has nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about in terms of the um, LEDs that go around the cabinet. LED Blinky is a separate board and a separate software that gets controlled. So as you scroll through a MAME game or a lots of other games for that matter, it pulls up the actual controls. So like this is a fighter. So there's four buttons. So I've got red, green, blue and red also on player two. And then these are mimicked up here because these buttons mimic player one's buttons for spinner and four way. So just wanted to get the tour out of the way. Now I'll turn this thing around and I'll show you the back of it and show you some guts that I did. So welcome to the back of my Megacade. I've got the audio off. So you can see I've got LEDs going up the whole side. Uh, here, let me go over here. This might be a better view. Um, and they are clipped in. I use these little clips. Let me see if I can get a close-up of that for you. So you can literally pull this out of the way and uh, bring this down. Because, as I'm sure everybody that has a mega kit is aware... Uh, here, let me turn the lights on. Hold on one second. Let me turn the interior cabinet lights on so you guys can see better. There. Cabinet lights on. So I just installed some white LED lights. Uh, stole that idea from Mr. Scantron. I think I saw who did that. Anyway, um, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so the clips uh, for these LEDs, because they have to be removable. See, this is not permanently mounted. It's just kind of hanging there. So it hangs off that corner. It's clipped up there. And the next tie point is right here. Um, as obviously the LEDs are reacting to my voice. I'll get to that in a minute as well. Um, but I want, I, I want and I needed these to be removable because the panels for the Megacade need to fit in behind the strips because I wanted them to be straight and I wanted them to be tight with the T-molding so you couldn't see them, but they're still right where they need to be. Because my whole thing and my philosophy with LEDs is you shouldn't see them directly. You should never view them directly unless it's like a, a glowing button. But these are ambient lights. These are meant to be reflected off of surfaces, in my opinion. So I, I never want anybody to actually see these. So behind the cabinet, they're just back here, not even in front of the T-molding. And you have to look all the way around because there's a little bit recessed from the T-molding. And they're bouncing light off the back of the wall. So... I needed to be them to be removable so I can get my panels in and out of here. So if you just move these little clips aside, like this, it gives me a ton of slack. And if I need more than that, I've got another clip down here that's gonna, because of this is angled, the way this is designed, it'll give, it'll pull this string out another six inches or so. And then to put it back, you just quickly replace the 
clip and you're good to go. And you just tighten it back up. Now we're straight and nobody's the wiser. So that's how that works. Uh, down here I wanted to show you, I drilled a small hole. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but there's one LED strip coming out and going down underneath. And then this LED strip is coming out of the same hole and going up. And so that's my tie point to the cabinet. That's why there's only one hole for these two giant uh, strips for the whole cabinet. Now let me show you the other side. So here on the other side, these are just the tie points. There's no hole. So the end of the line for the bottom U-shape is right here. And the end of the line for the top U-shape is right there. So both of them originate there. One goes up and around and the other one goes down and around that way. So they both come inside the cabinet and what controls them is this guy right here. This is a DigiQuad LED uh, control board. Now, you've probably never heard of these unless you're super nerdy, but, and I can show something on screen. I'll put it up on screen right now. Here, let me put it over here so I can add something later in post. If you've ever seen on YouTube, those crazy guys that decorate their whole house in multicolored LEDs and then create like a Christmas light show. The community, the DIY community around that built these. And so these are designed to be extremely customizable DIY LED controllers. And so this is a quad, so it can control four outputs and I've only got three hooked up. And then for programming reasons, I have a single board. It's just a single output. Technically you can do two on here, but for the most part, it's designed to do a uh, single output. And that controls the ring on the front of the arcade because literally all the time I want that doing something different than what this is doing, if that makes any sense. So I'm using <laughs> extremely flexible, crazy DIY hardware and software to do this. You don't have to, obviously. You can go to Amazon and get a $20 string of lights that's audio reactive and just go nuts and you're gonna achieve 90% of what I'm achieving. Uh, and then I'll show you later in the video why I did it this way. It gives you a little bit more control. Obviously it's way more nerdy and that's the way I go, but I just wanted to show you what the back end was uh, for what's controlling these and what these afford you in terms of flexibility going forward. So let me show you that. Uh, before we go showing off the software, there's one other thing I wanted to show you, and that's the power distribution. So these are kind of big boy LEDs and big boy LED controllers, so you need big boy power. I've got two dedicated power supplies just for what you call the accessories on this arcade. So it's literally driving the arcade button lights, the rear cabinet lights, um, some USB hubs, and I forget what the 12 volts doing. It's got a couple accessories hooked up to it, but basically in an arcade, you've got a five volt source that you need and a 12 volt source that you need. So what I did, and let me dip, dip you back around here, is I created distribution blocks for all of them. So anytime I plug something in, instead of having a gigantic ugly wall wart that you plug into a regular power strip and you fill up your arcade with power strips, I cut the end off and I bring it over here to one of my distribution blocks. Negative, positive, get it wire managed and get it out of here and get it where it needs to be. Same thing for 12 volts. So, and that saves me a lot of room because I'm putting in other things in my arcade. <laughs> and I've still got room for a couple more things, but this is a project I'll talk about when I'm closer to getting it done. But uh, there, just note that this isn't completed yet and there's gonna be one more computer, but I got started on the wire management. Cause you have to, if you don't, if you wanna cram all this stuff in your arcade, you have to wire manage from day one. Otherwise you'll end up redoing everything two or three or four times. Anyways, let's get to the software and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Hopefully if I'm doing this right, you'll see the arcade and the software on the screen at the same time. This is the web interface. Um, I've got both, so my arcade, I can change the entire color, go from blue to red. So right now the effect is it's just breathing red. Uh, if I want to make it a solid color, I go to effects and I hit solid. And then I can go back to colors and I can make sure that's full brightness, um, which, you know, kind of makes my office look like it's on fire. And then I can switch over to, this is the software control for the ring. I can make that pink 
or I can put kind of more of a magenta. Uh, I can go to green, or I can match the red, which is kind of a neat effect. Now these are all solid colors, so this is what I was talking about, how this leads into the flexibility. This is the built-in web interface control, um, and it's got all these built-in effects like you would, you know, in any standard um, uh, off-the-shelf LED product. So if I select one of these uh, effects and I go back to colors, uh, some of these effects require two colors, so I'll make three blue just to have a nice opposite effect. And then, as you can see, whatever Drip is doing, that's what Drip is doing on the ring. Let's find something more interesting. How about Fire Flicker? What does that do? Not much. How about, oh, Fireworks One Dimensional is kind of cool. So it kind of sends up a blast, and then it explodes and it goes around. So that's neat. Um, Heartbeat's kind of cool, so it kind of pretends to be an ICU heartbeat. I hope the camera's picking it up. It's kind of hard with the uh, thing on full brightness. Let me try the full arcade. Let me, so I'm gonna switch back to the arcade itself. Uh, I'm gonna pick two colors and I can go to effects. Uh, and let's pick something insane. Like there is a uh, color waves, I think is kind of a full effect. You can see how it's dancing across the floor and on the ceiling. And if I had it pushed back up against the wall, you would see that effect a little more. Um, actually, let me do that. I want you guys to see the full effect. Hold on one second. There, that's a better angle for you guys to get the full effect. Uh, let me turn the audio down just to scotch. Make sure you can hear me. Anyway, uh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys uh, is some of the different modes. So on the cabinet, if I go to something kind of extreme, like maybe plasma, that's kind of a cool effect. Uh, you've got the heartbeat going and all that stuff. So there's some really neat built-in controls. Uh, we can go to scanner dual, where it does dual color shift, or sign line. So it just kind of throws colors back and forth. And you can speed up these effects. And you can pick different colors. I mean, like literally the infinite combinations and infinite possibilities. Um, and you, you're, you're only limited by your imagination, which this is what I love. That's I love the robustness of this, this is why I did it. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a thing called PCFX, and that's what brings in the audio uh, reactiveness. So let me fire that up. That's a separate application that runs on the arcade. And it also has its own web browser. So I'll bring that in as well. So let me turn that on. So now you can see, based on the sound of my voice, the MK ring is going back to the strobe effect because it's being affected by all this stuff. And you can see, it's not the only thing in my office. I've got my desk and my bookshelf with LEDs and they can all be sound reactive and we can get real nuts as well. So if I change the effect uh, on the quad arcade, because right now it didn't switch, let me pick something else. Let's go to scroll reactive and set effect. Uh, looks like it's still being controlled. Let me try changing that. All right, I had to reboot the uh, controller because it was being conflicted. So if you control it via your phone or the web interface, you have to reboot it before you can control it via the sound reactive interface. But as you can tell by the sound of my voice, the arcade is going nuts to sound. And if I turn up the arcade, full party mode. <laughs> Get you guys back in tripod. All right. Hopefully we don't hit copyright for that. 
Um, so anyways, that's what I wanted to show you guys is the flexibility of this. The possibilities are literally endless because what the community did, the project, the software project is called WLED. And WLED is what runs on those custom boards, uh, which is an ESP32 or an ESP, uh, I believe, 286 or 2886. Uh, don't correct. I'll have links in the description to the boards uh, down below, but don't uh, hold me to those model numbers. But basically, uh, these are just Arduino boards with GPIO output pins. If you're into this nerdy stuff, WLED is a repository for LED controls and effects. And then what they layered on top of that is they added the protocols for E131, DMX, and I think one other one that are basically professional LED lighting control protocols. And so things like X-Lights, the crazy software that the uh, people that use to light up their houses can then talk to these boards. So it gives you can go from just using your phone and doing what I'm doing or go to the audio reactive stuff and do what I'm doing, or you can go whole hog and get into the X lights and programming your lights and setting up a whole light show with timed events and set to music and calculating your BPM and all that stuff. I don't plan on going there right now, but someday I like the, I don't know, the ability to do that, maybe explore it in the future. But for now, I'm really satisfied with the results of this. And then as you can see, the arcade, reacts to the sounds of the machine itself, the voices and the energy in the room. And I prefer that effect over something coming from the software of just the game. Because the game doesn't know how to read the energy of the room, but the audio of the room usually does, if that makes any sense. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I know you might have some questions. Definitely hit me up in the comments uh, down below. It's um, Again, something you can achieve real cheap by going to Amazon and getting, you know, Govi is the manufacturer of the week of cheap LED uh, kits that can do sound reactive stuff. And that's fine. If they, you know, you, like I said, you can achieve 90% of these results. I just wanted the more flexibility. I wanted to learn and I wanted the DIY aspect because to me, that's the majority of this hobby. And that's why I love doing this stuff. So if you guys got questions, hit me up in the comments below, hit the like button, subscribe. Do all those things, and I'll see you guys in the next one.